Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, dealing with financial blunders, part one in our series on getting your financial house in order, sponsored by Life Size Solutions and the Society for Financial Awareness. Welcome to our first segment about blunders and financial mistakes that we've made throughout our life, and I've made them too. Nobody's immune to it. We've all failed in some degree when you talk about finances. In fact, there was a study that two-thirds of Americans have made mistakes, some of which have been huge mistakes, not only bankruptcy, not only Chapter 11 reorganization, but people have just been in debt for so long. So there's ways to get out of debt. There's ways to get into a budget. We're going to talk about some of these things, but to walk through the basic blunders of what's going on. And one of the biggest powers that really hurt us in financial planning and financial thinking is our emotions itself. You can't let your emotions get in the way of good financial discipline. And you'll notice that the American Nobel Prize, Professor Thayer, Thaler, actually won the Nobel Prize this year in 2017 based on financial behavior and how people think. And 90% of the problems that we get involved in are impulse buying and behaviors that the psychonomics just are really not good. So when you're looking at these things and you're saying, I need to get a hold of my emotions, I need to get a hold of my feelings, I can't let them drive me, I can't let sales drive me. Remember, the entire marketing system on commercials, advertisement, sales campaigns are all built to appeal to the lowest base entry points into our soul. So when we're always being marketed to, we have to learn how to resist it and understand what the dynamics are when you see an ad on television or you see it on the internet to try to come to a place where you actually buy things that you need and things that are actually hold some appreciational value if you can. Now, I talked about this instant gratification. I remember when credit cards came in vogue. I mean, before I had to do everything in cash, if you didn't have the money in your checking account, it wasn't gonna happen. But slowly but surely, they started introducing credit cards. You had a certain amount of money, you could pay it. And you didn't have to pay the whole thing off every month, you could pay the minimum payment. But of course, I didn't know that the minimum payment was actually somewhere in the double digit interest rate charge. And back in the day, you could only have one or two or three cards, but then all of a sudden everybody had cards. And think about this, they were offering credit cards to people in college and coming out of college. People who have not established a budget, not established their job, didn't have consistent revenue, and they thought they needed to buy everything. And of course, the old adage of keeping up with the Joneses was just given from the prede our predecessors, our generation before us, to the baby boomers, and now we've downloaded it to Gen X, Gen Y, and also the millennials. So everybody feels like they gotta compete and be successful and have the image of success, and especially when it comes to our children. So when you look at instant gratification, this is the thing that's causing so much pain and so much havoc in our own uh, financial uh, stability. And to gain back control, we have to gain back our spending. Managing expectations. Now, I want to be a little lower entry bar so that we can have good successes, small baby steps, so to speak. I want to establish Establishing unrealistic goals can be extremely debilitating. Think about it. I said, we're going to get out of debt in a year. Well, it's probably not going to happen. If you have $30,000 worth of credit card debt, you're going to need to give yourself some time and space so that you can actually walk through this in a methodical way and then finally conquer your debt and start working on a savings plan. Can, can, you, create, can you create a plan that you can live with? Again, I need to do something that's an entry level. I don't want to go into a discipline that's like monastic lifestyle that I'm living at a her like a hermitage. I want to really walk into it as an easy to understand, slow entry level into a plan that I can actually execute. I want to look at set reasonable financial goals. I want to be out of debt by a certain amount of time. I have a three-year plan. I have a one-year plan. I also want to be able to say I want to have a, build an emergency fund. I want to be able to start putting money aside for things like I might want a down payment on a home. I want to be able to put a down payment on a car or pay it out cash, depending upon your disciplines. But you need to go ahead and become, you can be revolutionary and you can be radical, but you need to set goals that are, that are achievable so that you don't sit there and debilitate yourself and find yourself just giving up. And then the last one is, you got to ease into your new financial plan. Out in maybe two to three years as you're moving from your mistakes to proper discipline, you're going to have to sit there and say, by the time I hit the third year, I should be on a financial plan and a financial budget. Without a budget, we're doomed to keep continuing to repeat the same cycle of failure, and our finances will never, ever serve us. We'll always be serving them. 
Instead of dramatic overhaul, try easing into your budget by making a few small changes leading to larger ones. Now, and as a matter of fact, one of the things you'll notice is discretionary spending is the first place to attack debt with. So if you're used to going out for lunch every day, if you're going to uh, Starbucks every morning, if there are certain routines that you have already put inside the way, your daily uh, planning, this is one of those areas where you'll be stunned, if you, especially if you put it on your credit card. Look at your credit card statements and you'll see two, $300 worth of charges. And if you can pull away from discretionary spending, especially on food and entertainment, you'll find that this is a huge place to go first. Another thing I like to do is have a monster garage sale. Just get the, all the things I don't need, see what I can sell it for, and take that money and push it against, directly against my debt. My job is to go ahead and have a plan, but I can't have a plan when I have an obstacle on my spending habits and I'm the problem. So I want to be able to start moving the psychonomics, my own psychonomics, know what I can't deal with, know what my propensities are. I need to get out of the addiction of debt. And one of those ways is start to methodically take away from my discretionary spending, my entertainment, my going out to eat, and applying all that money and applying it directly to my debt. As of 2016, Americans are carrying $929 billion. We're almost a trillion in debt. By the way, that doesn't even count the $1.02 trillion that we owe in student debt. Using cash uh, reserves excuse me, using cash reduces your reliance on credit cards. If you have the money in the bank, it's easy to make a decision because you know you have so many bills to pay and you have a budget online, you're going to be much more discerning and you're going to be slow to spend on a discretionary item. And if you're struggling with credit card debt, make a plan to get out of it. And there's several different plans on the internet. Some of them are excellent, actually. And you may be able to have your debt negotiated down depending upon what service uh, will help to help you reestablish your debt and remember, pay none of these guys any money until you're starting to work and it looks like it's tested, it's proven, and you're getting out of debt. Protecting your future. Insurance is an important part of your financial plan. During the time where we're trying to get solvent in our finances, we still can't let go of some of the protection items. I have to have car insurance. I have a car. I have to have homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance. I have to have life insurance. If I'm the breadwinner or my wife is also working, we are now co-breadwinners. We need to cover all the basic angles of insurance, especially medical insurance. And so it, those are the kind of things that are kind of like not optional, and you need to have those in place. Without those foundations, any of those areas could hurt you and put you in dire financial need. Living without a net. Well, let's just say having an emergency fund is critical to financial success. How critical is it? Having a financial, everybody has deductibles on their cars, deductibles on their home insurance, deductibles on their medical insurance. I need to have my deductibles covered in my emergency fund. I may have repairs on my car, repairs on my home. I need to have an emergency fund. I may lose my job. So I need about three to six months worth of income already put inside a fund to cover all these contingencies before I can start getting into a serious plan. So once I'm done with getting out of debt, my next project is definitely attacking this issue and setting up an emergency fund that covers all my deductibles and my insurance and three to six months worth of work in case I lose my job. And then credit. You know, there's credit repair, there's legit and non-legit repair for your credit if you have bad credit. Your biggest issue is to just to slowly and methodically get out of debt and be careful that you're not giving your information to identity thieves, which is a huge problem in the United States. And then ordering your credit reports, you can go online at www.annualcreditreport.com. You can call telephone 877-322-8228. Or you can just mail it at Annual Credit Report Request Service, P.O. Box 105281, Atlanta, Georgia, 30348-5281. And you can download the form right on, our web, on that website at www.ftc.gov slash credit. Don't forget to watch our next segment on Getting Fiscally Fit, part two of our series on getting your financial house in order. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on the show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or financial advisor. You've been watching Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Yeah.